Take a look at this graph. It's the average smartphone upgrade cycle in the US according to Statista. And you'll see that it's been increasing since 2022. That means that the general public are now holding onto their devices for longer. And that isn't surprising. Mobile phones, especially high-end ones, have sat at over four-figure price tags for a few years now. And that's crazy money to spend on something that you only plan on upgrading every one or two years. But it does make a little more sense when you intend on keeping it for five years or more. But the phone that I've been using isn't one of those flagship phones. It's a cut down Samsung Galaxy S21 FE. It's been my work phone for over a year and I don't intend on swapping it out. Here's why that is. I bet you know someone who still rocks one of those older iPhones with the fat top and bottom bezels. And there's a reason for that. iPhones stay good for long after their contract period. Stuff like their cameras, their performance, Heck, even something as simple as the compatibility with the latest applications and app updates. And companies like Samsung and Google have been quietly making their phones better for long-term usage too. The marketing tactic of telling the customer, you need a new phone, isn't working as well anymore. And that graph that you saw at the beginning of the video is just proof of this. Keep in mind, by the way, that I have access to all manner of different smartphones from the Google Pixel 8 Pro to the latest Galaxy. But this phone stays in my pocket. It's three generations old, was never the best phone when it launched, and yet I have no problem using it every single day. It runs the latest version of Android, which is currently Android 14, with Samsung One UI 6 atop of it. In fact, it's due to receive Android 15 this year with another year of security patches after that. So I'm not going to run into any kind of app incompatibility anytime soon. And it's not all numbers and specs either. Actually using this thing daily, I've not run into any significant slowdowns or crashes. I haven't felt limited by what the Galaxy S21 FE can offer. And actually it being specifically this model has its benefits. The plastic back and tough metal rails mean that I don't run a case on it, making it far more pocketable, which is convenient since it comes with me absolutely everywhere. Oh, and that lower price tag means that I'm less worried about babying the thing because to be quite frank with you, I don't care as much if it gets the odd scuff or scrape, which is crucial because I also don't want to be slowed down by the pieces of tech that I'm using. Cameras are an important component to me as a videographer, and though I'm not completely delusional, I know for a fact these are not the best cameras on a smartphone, even one this old. They are still pretty good, and since the main sensor is the one that you would have found in the full fat S21, you can expect this thing to continue to take good photos and videos. You could quite easily use this thing to shoot your social footage, and I have done on several occasions when I'm doing something to do with smartwatches or wearables, I'm out in the field and I don't have my big camera with me, I will use this camera to take little snippets of video to include in the review. The Ultra HD 60p and 30p video comes out pretty good for a cut down model for a phone that's a few years old. In fact, even the selfie camera on this phone is capable of portrait video. So isolating the subject in say a TikTok or a reel or a short is easy to do so without any kind of editing right on the camera, which is quite impressive for a phone of this age, right? Its ancillary cameras are a little weak compared to what you'd find in a good mid-ranger or flagship killer these days with less dynamic range and some over-sharpening going on here too. But that's almost irrelevant when you consider the dollar value of this phone. It's less than $250 on the used market. That's a quarter of the cost of a flagship smartphone in 2024. For a phone that's still going to receive two years of updates, that's pretty incredible value for money. Better actually in the US, thanks to Samsung's unfavorable decision to include its worst performing Exynos chip outside of the US and China. So the performance is good, software support is still reasonable, and the cameras aren't bad either. But I'd argue that the S21 FE's best hardware feature is its display. It's a 6.4 inch Full HD Plus 120Hz AMOLED, which boils down to just a fast, bright, sharp display that, thanks to Samsung's solid color calibration, is also punchy and really enjoyable to use. 
this high refresh rate display might be one of the key factors in keeping this phone from feeling old or sluggish compared to the latest devices. It's a peach of a panel. I don't watch loads of video on here, but when I do, it's arguably more enjoyable than some of the newer, more expensive phones because Samsung's color calibration is fantastic. Honestly, battery life on a phone like this is going to vary quite a lot. Uh, has the phone been kept above 80% a lot? Has it been fast charged? Has it been wireless charged a lot? Both of which do heat up the battery more. If the answer is no to all of those, you can expect pretty good all day battery life. But if the answer is yes, it's likely that the cell will have been worn and that you will have to get it replaced. Which is good news because if you do replace it, you now know you have a brand new battery and your phone should last you a lot longer between charges. And that service can be done for around $150, a lot less than a smartphone. But above all else, I think the reason that this three generation old phone still feels good is that there hasn't been any major breakthrough in mobile tech for a little while. Innovation has stagnated, improvements in most areas have slowed down, and phones age way better now than, say, back in the Galaxy S3 days. In fact, I'd say that Android phones are right up there with iPhones when it comes to long-term viability, especially when you take into account the likes of the Pixel 8 and Galaxy S24, whose updates policies have been massively extended. When was the last time you saw a phone launch and just had to buy the device? Anyone? For me, it was probably the Pixel 6 Pro because of its super premium design and periscope zoom camera. And before that, maybe it was the Huawei Mate 20 Pro. The current crop of smartphones is better than ever. There's absolutely no doubt about that. But they aren't what I'd call groundbreaking, at least compared to a few generations ago. System on chips have been fast enough for a while. We've had high refresh rate screens on most phones for a few years and smartphone camera systems haven't massively leapt up from the ones from a couple of generations ago. There have been incremental upgrades for sure, but nothing major. In fact, phones are only going to get better at staying good. Google, Samsung and OnePlus have all come out with longer software update policies for their smartphones and the phones themselves are specs to the gills, so should hold up from that perspective too. It wasn't long ago that 16 gigabytes of RAM in a desktop computer would have seemed crazy, and yet that's not even the most amount of memory available in a smartphone today. There are devices out there with 24 gigs of RAM, 24 gigabytes. So if you're the owner of a new high-end smartphone and you feel the urge to upgrade in the next two years, consider not doing that. Ask yourself if a new phone will make your life meaningfully better by doing something that your current phone simply can't. Smartphones are getting good at getting old and my little Galaxy S21 FE is the perfect example of that. Let me know if you own an older smartphone in the comments. I'd love to see what kinds of devices you're rocking. Anyone on a Galaxy S10e or OnePlus 7T, I have a particular soft spot for those. Also hit like and subscribe if you enjoyed today's content and would like to support the channel. I've been Ryan Thomas with Android Police, and I'll catch you later. Cheers.